Hey everybody, welcome back. So this mess you're looking at is because I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to keep a stable temperature inside my new Ender 3 enclosure. So I'm thinking an air intake and an exhaust fan is probably going to be the best bet. So to try and get that done, I picked up the, one of these. Now I've used these before in other projects. This is a W1209 temperature controller. And um, as you'll see, it's got a it's got a three-digit display with decimal points. It's got three non-latching momentary push-button switches. It's got a 20-pin microcontroller, got an onboard LED, got a spot to plug a thermistor or thermocouple in, got a voltage regulator, got some diodes, resistors, and capacitors, just the kind of stuff so we can do all of its magic. It's got a 20-amp relay that's rated for 20 amps at... Um, at um, 14 volts DC or 125 volts AC. I would be very careful approaching 20 amps with this, but um, we're not going to get anywhere near it, so I'm not worried about it. It's also got um, screw down connectors for 12 volts plus and minus, which is what the, the board runs on. And then it has pin, it has connectors labeled K0 and K1. And that's what the, that's what the relay does. The relay connects these two together when a temperature trips it. So I've got a computer power supply here that I have um, bodged up so that I've so that it runs all the time. And all I've got is um, five volts, twelve volts, and ground coming out of it. And I've got an old computer fan here on a heat sink. I don't need the heat sink and I'm probably not going to use that fan anyway, but let's get it connected up and let's see how it works. Okay, we're wired up and we're ready to go and just because I know some of you are going to ask me, no, this board will not run off the 5 volt side of the power supply. It has to have 12. It'll light the LED up and some things work, but it does not read temperature or will not activate the relay. And how I have this wired up is I have the I'm only using I'm only using the computer power supply. I have its ground in the ground. I have its 12 volt line, which in the case of this computer power supply is yellow, in the 12 volt positive. I have its 5 volt line into what is that K1, and I have the fan's positive line into K0, and then I have the fan's ground back grounded back to the computer case. So let me just turn it on and let's see what we get. Okay, first thing it does when it powers on, it tells you what it thinks the current temperature in the in the room is. And right now it's reading 28.9. Here is my O1 18B. It will not read in decimal places. It says it's 28 degrees. Here's my old Oakley temp tester. We'll test it. That says it's 29 degrees. And um, I got my little cheapy Harbor Freight probe here. What does it say it is? It says it will read out. It says it is 83 degrees. Up, oh, it's in Fahrenheit. Let me switch it. It says it is, I don't know if you can see that, it says it's 28.8. So this now says 28.5. There is a way to offset these if you believe they're reading incorrectly. Um, this thing has a number of different settings. You can set it to be to, to heat or to cool, which means it can it can control the heater once temperature drops too low, or it can control a, uh, a um, cooling device, a fan or an air conditioner, once the temperature goes too high. And you can set, I forget what they call it in the instructions, it's kind of a offset type of thing. So if you set it at 30 degrees, and it constantly is fluctuating between 30 and 31, you, you don't want it switching on and off all the time. So it comes by, set by default with about a two degree separation so that it doesn't turn off all the time. And I have got it, and to set it, you simply press the set button, which is on the left, and then while it's flashing, you can use plus or minus. Oh, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see that a little better. You can use plus or minus once it's flashing. Oh, let me get it flashing again. You can use plus or minus to change the temperature, and of course you can hold it and then it will go really, really quick. I think I had it set to 20. I think I had it set to 30. Let's go back to 30. The fan just turned on. Let's go back to 30. Oops.
Okay, sorry for that little preview. I didn't mean to give that to you. But um, you can also control its other functions and you can set an upper and a lower limit of the temperature this can be set to so you can't accidentally set it to something ridiculous and have the thing completely not function. You can set a, an alarm where it will disable everything, you, an alarm temperature. There's a number of different things you can do with them and you access those just by holding down the set button for about five seconds. And P0 is where you control, oops, let me go back one. P0 is where you control whether it's a heater or cool, and you can see it says C for cool. And I'm not going to run through all the different things it can do, because right now we just want it to be a temperature controller for a cooling fan. So let's give that a shot. I know I gave you a preview. I didn't mean to. Let's get the fan in. Here is the thermistor. I believe I have it set to, let's check it. I have it set to 30 Celsius. So, let it go back to normal. Reading 28.9, so I'm going to hold this in my hand and run the temperature up. Can you see that? You can't. i got the glare on it, so I'll hold it. And it's going to go to 32 because I have a 2 degree offset. And that just keeps it from constantly turning on and off if it's, the temperature is going up and down right above the, what you set to. So when it hits 32, the LED on the board will come on and the fan starts to spin. And I've got the fan hooked up to the 5 volt line because these computer fans will happily run off 5 volts just at a lower RPM. So now when I let it go and um, I brought a little, little cup of water in here, hopefully this cool it down a little bit quicker. Now when it drops below 30, it'll switch off again. LED goes off and the fan spins down. So there's a two degree range where it will not turn off. So it, it has to crush. And you can also set um, other ways in this to keep it from switching on and off a lot. But the offset is the easiest way to do it, I think. And let's try it one more time. So it should turn on at 32. And I think I'm probably going to be shooting for somewhere between, depending on the material, 35 to 40 C in the enclosure, and maybe even as high as 60 to 70. But I'm um, thinking a stable temperature in around 35 to 40 is probably going to be good enough for most materials. And I'm not going to use this printer to print PLA. I've got the other printers for that. So at 32 it turned back on. And going to drop it back in the water and it should turn back off at 30 and it does so that's the and, and this this little board cost about I don't know five bucks I think I paid I think I paid 450 or 475 for this one comes with the thermistor and um, let's get I'm going to switch the power supply off and unplug it and let me unwire it real quick and I'll show you I printed a little thing off Thingiverse and I modified it to um, for I think that will be better for my purposes. Let me just get the wires out of it real quick. Nice little board for four or five bucks. It's hard to even believe you can buy something. You know, 20 years ago, well, things like this didn't really exist in this format. Certainly not at this size 20 years ago. But this would have cost a boatload of money. So it's it's pretty amazing. So this little thing was something on Thingiverse I printed. Let me zoom back out a bit here. We're a little close for this part of it. There we go. Let me get my water out of the way before I knock it over. Turn my meter off. This little thing, somebody designed to hold this, and it was on Thingiverse, and I'll put a link to it below. And his design, the mounting foot was up above because he wanted to mount it underneath his enclosure. And um, I want it on top of my enclosure, and I didn't want it upside down, so I did what I do here. I loaded it. He thankfully provided a CAD file. I loaded it in the Thingiverse, and I took his foot as a top off, and I moved it to the bottom. And um, it's really pretty nice. The only mistake I really made in doing it was there was some lettering across here and a little thermometer pictogram there and I mistakenly told Cura because it prints face down I mistakenly told Cura to um what's that setting in there that says adjust the overhangs to make them printable yeah it took, completely took the lettering and the pictogram away but I don't care that much so the board goes in the back first of all there's three little buttons that go in it 
so that you can operate it while it's in the case. And you have to wire the board first. You wire the board first, and um, then the board sits in like this, and there's enough room underneath here to bring the wires out. So you kind of wiggle it around till you get it on top of the buttons. It's a beautiful fit. Holes line up perfectly. Wires are going to come through this opening in the bottom. And then this part has a, um, and you see it has a little bit of a recess to make room for the solder pins. And again, the holes line up and four screws and it's held on. And then the wires are going to come through these holes on the back. And um, that's going to screw right to the top of my, um, my enclosure. And the wires will come out the back and I'll figure out how I am going to um, power the whole thing in the near future. Anyway, I will put links to all this stuff on um, in the, down below in, in, the, um, in the little description. And I'm including the original one of these and my remix version of it, um, as well as the um, W209, W1209 temperature controller. Anyway, that's about it for right now. This is just something that I thought you might be interested in. They've been around for a while. And um, there's a bunch of information on them on the internet. If you want to know anything else, questions, comments, things you've done differently that might you think might work better, let me know below and I'll take a look at it and respond. Thanks for checking this out and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now.